an exciting night here for both of these teams here in Philadelphia. I got to catch up with both head coaches earlier in this week to hear what they were most excited for for tonight. UPenn's head coach Steve Donahue said he has a group of guys that are great on and off the court. He said their chemistry off the court is so great that the juniors and seniors live in a house off campus together. But he said tonight what he's excited about is to see them build their own identity here on this court. On the other side of the bench, head coach Island told me that his team has so much that they're excited for here to be able to play in this iconic place in the palestra. He said that's not something they take lightly. They've been watching videos all week about this place, about its history and the big moments. And he said he brought his team in earlier today, two hours earlier for shoot around so they could get out all the jitters. When I saw him before tip off, he said they're excited and they're ready. Guys. Megan, thank you very much. Coming into this game with John Jay getting to play here in the palestra, here's Marcus Paulin, the junior guard, all set to take first free throws of this season. It's a pretty good job of splitting the defense right there. Spinoso and Slackert on the ball screen. Paulin gets to the basket, Clark Slackert. One defensive possession, one foul in the books. Not too worried about that. Clark pretty good playing, keeping his man in front of him, not fouling. We were trying to figure out how this new look lineup was going to fit together, at least for now. Tyler Perkins, the freshman, bringing the ball up. Well, you remember who your leading assist man was last year, Joe Torty? That would be Nick Spinoso. That would be Nick Spinoso. Perkins, nice take in, using his frame to shield the ball. No assist needed there. Perkins. Penn's leading shot taker in their two scrimmages, 29 in the air in the two they played. And Steve Donahue very high on him. Got to look at him up close in the locker room before the game. Bigger through the upper body than I had anticipated. Here's Cam Thrower, and he splashes it in. Already a little bit of a different look for Thrower, and he kind of seemed to be waiting for his shot a lot of times last year. That time, not at all. Catch and shoot. All right, better not wait this year. No Jordan Dingle. That means there are going to be a lot more shots available. And that one thrown out of bounds off of Perkins. See, there's a play that a week from now, Perkins doesn't let that one bounce. He's looking at it. All right, this one's going. John Jay, good job not quitting on it. I think it was Evelyn that threw, throws it off Perkins. If you can grab it. Grab it. It's like my dad used to say, if somebody offers you money, you take that money and then figure out the rest of it later. Get that rebound. Get that rebound. A kick out. And Isaac Holmes reigns in the three. Holmes, the leading scorer from last year's team, shooting 34% in 2022. Good inside-out action by John Jay that time. Thrower. Throws that one in, two for two from bonus distance for Cam Thrower. He has not hit the net yet. He looks very confident that high release. Gets his legs underneath him. Nice take, and Spinoso with the rebound. With this outlet, fantastic outlet pass. And what a finish by Slacker at the other end to catch it and settle it down, but it all started with that pass, because that was not on time either, Vince. Spinoso having to fight through some contact. Patient in the pocket, moved up a little bit, found his receiver, <laughs> took a couple looks, went through his progressions. Fading jumpers hit by Adrian Kopeck, and neither team can miss. So four possessions now for John Jay, and on every one of them, they've gotten into the middle of the floor. I'm sure Steve Donahue is going to take a look at that. Eddie Holland traveled. It's another player that head coach Steve Donahue illustrated as somebody who's going to take a big step forward again this year after having taken one in the offseason. We've seen flashes from Eddie Holland over his first couple years. He's just looking for that opportunity to get some consistent extended minutes. And there you go. John Jay getting into the floor, middle of the floor again. Kopech just goes right up the chest of Cam Thrower. You can see right there at the end, Thrower reaches out just a little bit. Kopech, a 46% free throw shooter last year. Means this one's going in, Joe Torty. Oh, well, hello. 
Every I guess I'm not in midseason <laughs> form. <laughs> Give it time. You know, Vince, last year we talked about such this a This one's definitely going in. Th count this one? Yeah. Just run down to the end of the floor. <laughs> Look like at it. Playing golf with you, Joe Torrey. Just put it out there, 146 yards in the middle of the fairway. Save us all some time. Boom. Tell me I drive it 146 yards. What the wind to your back. Sad, sad state of affairs. 148. <laughs> yeah, give me some roll. Full court pressure shown by John Jay. And this is a Penn team that is going to have to figure out kind of on the fly who they are. And you mentioned no Jordan Dingle. A lot of shots available. Losing the nation's second leading score. Thrower kicks it out for Slacker. A three. Bang. Penn red hot from the outside to begin this one. Holland slashing in. Spinoso almost blocked that. Holland a good save. Slacker for Thrower. Slackert left open, a three, got it. You wonder who the playmaking ball handlers are for this Penn team. The three guys who I think are more shoot first point guards. We'll see a little bit more with Tyler Perkins, but with Thrower and with Slacker, they're both guys that have traditionally been looking for their shot. And of course, first four or five possessions here, both of them do a great job of penetrating, dishing, and finding each other for open threes. Marquise Pollen, a tough finish. Now Holland going to work on the block. Too much to handle inside. And Holland, aggressive in the early going. Penn leads by 11. Two-footed leap right there. Good, strong attack. Pollen can't get the runner to go. And you do wonder, given all of those shoot-first guards that you mentioned, Vince, if it's going to be Spinoso again running the show as Perkins draws the foul, he'll go to the free-throw line. Another thing that Perkins, at least in the first two scrimmages, did a lot of, drew six fouls in each game, which tells you he's attacking off the good looks. They've had high releases, open looks. A good look at Augie Gerhardt, who's coming in and... He's expected to contribute right away on the low block as a first-year player. You get that kind of love as a freshman? It's not like not like David Robinson's entering here. It's Augie Gerhardt. Oh, so let's get Augie some face time. <laughs> he got a good 30 seconds. <laughs> and here's Perkins. I, I immediately, and I'm all I'd, for it. I, you know, I don't have anything against the kid. But <laughs> now Perkins, I, I've noticed a, a, an issue with his game. He's shooting with the wrong hand. I know that you've noticed that as well. Indeed. Take a seat. Not a whole lot he's done wrong early in this game. Attacking, defending, playing physically. Steve Donahue worries a little bit about the pace of it defensively for him. Takes a while to figure out how quickly some of these other teams play, and you get in danger of foul trouble. Chisholm lets it go from three, and Thrower comes down with the rebound. George Smith and Andrew Lechkowski in the game as well. Lechkowski, a big-time contributor last year, athleticism and defense thrower from NBA range, rims out. Gerhardt puts it up and in, and one. Oh, I like him. First collegiate bucket like him. for Augie Gerhardt. A little fire in the belly right there. I think Augie and I are going to get along well. He looks like your type of guy. Got a haircut fire. you can set your watch to, you know? <laughs> Gerhardt coming to Penn from Denver, PA, by way of the Hill School. A lot of time out there, Joe Torty. A lot of soccer events going on in the current household right now. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Here's John Jay back on offense, a three. And Smith fighting over the rebound with Thrower, but Penn comes up with it. Smith, really a defensive stopper in a lot of ways for Penn last year. Yeah, when he went out with that nose issue that he suffered against Lafayette, Penn defensively really struggled in the next couple, three games. 
And Cam Thrower just keeps it going. You look at that Temple game that Penn won, but right. then you look at the LaSalle and St. Joe's games, which I thought George Smith could have made a real difference in them, and a couple other ones. So he has traditionally been one of Penn's better perimeter defenders. I was about to say who plays physically without fouling, but he fouled right there. So I'm going to check that comment. Also a guy who can knock down a shot from the outside. And that's been the biggest thing that stood out about Cam Thrower's game so far is that he's been Penn's catch and shoot shooter. I don't know if you can get longer, but Cam Thrower doesn't look thinner, but he looks longer. It looks like his, his release is a little higher. Looks confident. Look at that interior passing. Gerhard Glaskowski. John Jay. I guess you could get longer over the offseason by growing, but I stood <laughs> next to him. I don't think he's grown. He just kind of looks maybe leaner. You know, Vince, as you've been around you know, the program. A long and, time. Well, not just that, but as a player, how, how much development really does occur during offseason, say, between your freshman year and your sophomore year? Well, if it doesn't occur, then you don't have a particularly <laughs> productive career. I mean, that's the... I think the first year for a lot of guys is figuring out the pace of it and what kind of shape you need to be in and getting to that point where you can progress. Now, some guys, some guys are stars, and they're always going to be stars. A.J. Broder was going to be a star. But Darnell Foreman played, then played a little more, and by his senior year, he was an all-league player and an, indis an indispensable piece. So I'll some guys are working block. to get there. Some guys work to elevate the level where they start but off season you expect each guy to come back materially better especially in the first year or two right? at some point you grow up and you kind of figured it out and you hit a level looks like a couple of the sophomores for Penn have been putting in some work into specific parts of their game Penn with a 30 to 9 lead over John Jay Reese McMullen into the game was the reserve point guard last year and gave them leadership and meaningful minutes as that's a foul called inside. Daniel Reyes gaining position inside. Reyes does a pretty good job of feeling Gerhardt, who's a little up and down, a little stiff in the lower body, and then comes down at the end. Ray is a freshman from the Bronx. Points hard to come by for John Jay in the early going here. Marquise Paulin coming back in. Holmes takes a seat. Able to knock that one down. Full court pressure once again shown by the Bloodhounds. John Jay officially a criminal justice school. All of their majors, if not criminal justice, criminal justice adjacent. Criminal justice adjacent. Does that mean criminal? <laughs> I mean, Jeez. if you set me up with stuff like this, how am I not supposed to say say something? <laughs> you get me in trouble, Joe. We're eight minutes into the year. I'm working on it. That shot just missed from Nicholas Polonowski. Another freshman. Approaching the 12-minute mark here in the first half. Penn with a 20-point lead over John Jay. And one finish at the hoop. Nice take by Jordan Evelyn. Polonowski picks up his first. Little rock the baby right there, Polonowski. Again, a little too up and down. Uh, 
change for Penn. Johnny Walter in. Walter. You think, go ahead. Rich Kahn, the Palester PA announcer, is going to go with Augustus Gerhardt for four years, or he's going to ease into Augie. I mean, there, there are pros and cons I'm to just each, action. right? I'm there are pros action. and cons to each. Yeah. He's very formal, but it's a mouthful. It, it, right. I'll yeah. bet he gets to Augie by the end you of it. you got to think, you right? You think so? Yeah, I would think so. McMullen lobs it up for Walter. A little off target. Smith kicks it in the corner. A three. That one just long for Polonowski as well. Steve Dunny was talking about Polonowski and how much he likes him as a shooter. Foul called. Is this the, the second? No, just the first on Reese McMullen. We'll step aside for a breather. Penn leading 30-13 over John. Marquise Pollen is at the line. I would pronounce it, but that's your department. Oh, that, oh that's my job now. Yeah, come but, on. But see, you're, you're the Beats by Dre guy. You're like Gene Hart pronouncing the Russian hockey players <laughs> back in the 70s. You are a pro. I'm just a, I'm just a basket, former basketball player. <laughs> Professional Pollen. analyst, though, Joe. The most pro, Professional. I would say. Yeah. It's been kind of our first look, and for many Penn fans, their first look at uh, this freshman class. What kind of stands out to you in the early going that you've seen? Well, we've gotten a lot of Tyler Perkins and Augie Gerhardt, and you can see why, wow, like even that right there, that you can see why Steve Donahue is as high on this class. That's a play going up in traffic, not only the catch, but the ability to try and get that up on the glass, set play out of the timeout. But Evelyn that rot rotates over on the backside, he did a pretty good job. Just a split second late. Perkins now three for three from the free throw line. A couple of changes coming for John Jay. James Bradbury checking out. Tallest player listed on the roster at 6'11. Might be the tallest player on either roster. He's a tall drink of water. Big kid. Good frame. 32 14. Penn with the lead over John Jay. With Megan Birdsong and Vince Curran, Joe Torty. Glad that you could join us here in Philly. As Eddie Holland back into the game and grabbing a rebound. Here's Perkins. Left alone. The lefty lets it fly and drains it from three. Yeah, that one's got to go. He gets the ball in transition, does Perkins. Looks like he's trying to hit ahead. Nobody picks him up. He says, oh, okay, let me let this one fly. Another takeaway here. Slackert for Holland. He can let it rip, but just lays it in instead. Created by Cam Thrower on the reach in, getting the deflection. Vince, game like this early on, what, what's Penn looking to get out of this in, in a game against John Jay? Minutes, lineups, who matches up and plays well together. Nice defense that time by Penn. Who looks the part, for lack of a better way of putting it? Like, speaking of that, the part right there. Tyler Perkins on the attack again. Perkins has looked very impressive, and you talked about him playing above one, two, as opposed to a one. But he's really talented. But of your three primary ball handlers, Slackert, Thrower. And Perkins, I think that's going to be the challenge, is finding out who assumes the more traditional point guard role. If anybody. Maybe, maybe you end up just mixing and matching and taking guys off the ball in certain situations. Chisholm left it behind. Perkins ahead for Slacker. Nearly able to toe the line. Not quite. Pretty good burst right there by Slacker. He's trying to tiptoe 
along the baseline, went out, <laughs> came back in. Trying to little one two trickaroo to no avail. 39 14, the lead for Penn here in this first half. Now Reyes. Paulin driving, baseline. Nice take by Paulin to get around thrower. Perkins draws the double. Thrower left open, a three. That's the look, though. Attack that baseline. Kick open, kick out for the open three. Thrower just not able to knock it down. And Reyes drawing the foul there. Looks like it's going to be against Walter. Chisholm creates this little change of pace and then the no look for Reyes. Daniel Reyes at the line. Seventh team foul called on Penn. Great energy from Chisholm. I think John Jay in general has brought good energy tonight. Their kids are up, they're into the game. Again, I thought Chisholm penetration, picking up. A little undersized, but on the attack. Reyes just short on that one, but lane violation called, so another chance for Reyes. Ryan Highwind's team returning its top two leading scorers and three out of its top four from a season ago. Where did you come up with the term criminal justice adjacent? Well, because I'm in the game notes. Did I miss them? No, no. I, right, so I, this is a Joe Torrey original. Uh, this yeah. is not something that I should have picked up 100%, on. 100%, yeah. All right. Yeah. You set me up. Well, you know, listen. You set me up. Because, you know, I was thinking that it's the College of Criminal Justice, and that led me to wonder, is that the only thing that they do? Is it only criminal justice? It's also police administration. It's criminology, forensic psychology, all that kind of stuff. So I, you know. they don't. That doesn't fall under the whole criminal justice umbrella. You had to make the adjacent distinction. Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, I got to be honest with you. It's a reach. Joe. <laughs> think I'm nitpicking it's here? It's a reach. I think you are. Of course, there's also economics degrees and a couple others. Slackert can't get it to go from the baseline. Holland cleans it up. Offensive rebounding's always been a strong part of his game. It sure has. Good leaper off two feet, strong through the upper body. And now you can see it gets his energy up a little bit. Rebounding the stick back gets you a little more fired up on the defensive end. A steal away by Slackert, and he draws a foul on Paul. And back to Holland for a second. It, it, since he stepped onto campus, we've discussed it. You know, what does he need to do to get more minutes? Because certainly in a lot of different ways, he's looked the part. It has, he's, like I said, he's shown flashes, and sometimes it's just how the game fits into the system. So needing to improve ball handling, need to improve movement without the ball. Some things he does very well, and some things have been a work in progress. Like this, he does very well. Movement without the ball that time, but again, going up, getting it, gathering himself, and exploding to the rim. Paulin with Perkins on him, working on a bigger defender, lost the ball. Now Perkins ahead for Walter, and he stuffs it in. A really good look by Perkins. Kind of spots Walter coming down that right sideline. Pen up 45-18. Now Walter caught on the foul. Thought that he might have gotten away with it, but officials don't agree. Walter picks up his second foul. Penn leads 45-18 with 7.30. Megan, thanks very much. Blue collar, certainly a good word to describe what we've seen from John Jay so far. They have been very workmanlike in terms of their effort level on offense and defense. And Penn has gotten the better of it so far, though. 
Here's Cam Thrower, who's really lighting it up from the outside here as he's gotten these open looks. And then Tyler Perkins drawing a foul. You mentioned one of the strengths of his game. He does not look freshman-esque. You know, a lot of guys who say, oh, you know what? He's going to be, you know, when he puts a little weight on his frame and all that, he has got a man's upper body. Certainly looks like he's built to absorb a lot of that contact. Reyes back into the game. Coming out is Elijah Holmes. 6-4-2-0-5, they say. Looks a little, little heavier than that. Slackert got open, and now he'll go to the free throw line to shoot three. Looked like he was surprised by how open he was. Called against TJ Chisholm. Slackert at the free throw line. Last year, Clark Slackert shooting 88% from the line. Somebody giving a little kick out there of the foot. There you go, Joe. Well done. The numbers are what they are, Vince. There's nothing I can do. You should not have said anything no, about an 88% free throw just shooter. Just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. He's a 0% free throw shooter this year. Way to go, Joe. Way to go. He's going he's gonna to make like 38 in a row at this point. <laughs> as long as you don't, don't talk about what anything. a good free throw shooter he is. How long have we been doing this together, Joe? You should know better by now. Well, I, you set me up. You jinxed Slackert. I mean, what, at least I didn't say that he made however many in a row or whatever. It's, it's you know? all those kids that you have keeping you up all night. Yes. Right? I am sleep deprived. Oh, There's no stop. way around that. Stop. We know the one who's up. <laughs> You're not wrong there, yeah, partner. Come on. They go, oh, great. You're going to go hang out with Vince again. Yes, I am, sweetie. Oh, uh, you know what? She knew what she was signing up for. Oh, man. <laughs> now I'm getting you in trouble. You got me in trouble. Now I'm getting you in trouble. John Jay making subs here, and they continue to press full court. You would think you'd get better at this. Why? Why? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Here's Spinoza. Good look ahead. Good look ahead. Laskowski trying to go around contact, and Reyes doesn't like the foul call. It's a good job by Spinoso coming up. Let's see, who was it? George Smith throwing the ball in to give him a release valve. And it goes to a two-on-one, then a two-on-two, then a three-on-two. But it was one pass, get to the basket. Laskowski last year only shot seven free throws. Is that okay to say? That is okay to All say. Right. How many did he make, Joe? Uh, Don't do it. Don't do it. Two. One for two on this trip. He's halfway there. It's game one for all of us, Vince. Good scrape there by Spinoso. And a corner kick, reining it in for three. Isaac Holmes. One of a couple New Jersey players here on John Jay. Spinoso has a size advantage down low. Stripped. Travel. I think that was one of those. You know, I probably should have called a foul on the other end. Spinoso absorbed a lot of contact. Let me shift this back. Perkins has Elijah Holmes on him. Nice play to set up Perkins' back door and a good finish. That is why Nick Spinoza was your leading assist man last year. Has the ball in his hands a lot, initiating from the high post and great vision and decision making. He had two options there, finds Perkins' back door. The nifty finish. Perkins a steal. Laskowski flushes it in. 
Laskowski probably had my highlight of the year, the dunk he had last year against Temple. So now it's like, oh, it's Laskowski with another dunk. It's like, what are you going to do? <laughs> nice hit on the other end by Holmes. But you're right about that. When he took off from like a step inside the free throw That line. was awesome. So sick. Brought the house down. Perkins with 13 of Penn's 51 points. For three. Smith. No reset, no reset. Spinoso goes to the hook. Now Perkins on the follow. No, Leskowski bats it around. And now John Jay comes up with it after four chances for Penn. And coast to coast to finish the other way. It's a nice job by Holmes right there. Ends up in a two on one. Draws the defender. Christian Rosa finishes it off for John Jay. Four and a half left. Here in the first, Smith steps into a three. Spinoso puts it up too strong. Spinoso just rushes a little bit right there. Good hustle play by Laskowski to knock it off of Rosa. It'll be pen ball. Augie Gerhardt coming back in. Or Augustus, we haven't decided, right? The Rich Khan method. Here's Reese McMullen carrying it up for Penn. Eight team fouls apiece. Gerhardt all alone down low, and he draws the foul. He'll go to the free throw line. Gerhardt does a pretty good job of screening and initiating right there. Creates some space. Then a strong roll, pretty patient with it. Augustus Gerhardt at the line, shooting two. Gerhardt with two shots. Now Nicholas Polonowski coming in, replacing Leskowski. Rosa will take a seat for John Jay. Adrian Kopek back into the game. Gerhardt rolls that one in. 27 point pen lead. What do you think about the band on the other side down by the visiting team bench, Joe Torty? It's a switch from the 38 years past where they were in the section right across from the pen bench. Mixed feelings here, right? Because we used to get a nice front row seat for the band's performances and antics, but now perhaps we pick up less of it on our headsets as George Smith has that one miss over the backboard. Step aside for a breather. 3.34 to go in the first half. Penn and John Jay kicking off the season. Current Joe Torty, Megan Bird song here with you. Now, Vince, not getting off the hook with this one. We were uh, just talking about the positioning of the band yep. and whether you were a fan of uh, the relocation. Uh, I was going to bring it up on my own, Joe, but I led you into that. I get maybe wanting to put it down there to be a little bit of a distraction to the other team. But like right next to the bench? Yeah, but 38 years worked pretty well with the students on the Penn offensive end in the second half. Guess who doesn't get a vote, Joe? Well, certainly not you. It's just me who doesn't get a vote. Nice triple. Reined in by Jameer Stewart, the sophomore from Baldwin, New York. Slacker kicking it to Smith. That's where Slacker really was effective last year, wasn't it? I was going to say, how many times have we seen that over the course of three years? Clark Slacker really good getting to that 12 to 15 foot range and either taking that extra step, getting the float, or pulling up and knocking down that 12 footer. Banked in by Kopech. Now McMullen charging ahead here. Two and a half until halftime. 
Smith dribbled off his foot and out of bounds. He's frustrated there. Needs to trust himself right there. He gets that on the back door. Needs to trust that left hand, get it up on the glass. Little hesitation. What stuck out to you, you were talking about lineups and seeing how pieces fit together. Anything in the early going here that particularly jumps out? Well, I mean, a couple things. Cam Thrower looking as comfortable as he's looked. You're going to need him from the perimeter. I think Tyler Perkins looks to be as good as advertised. Smith. Let's it go, and he reigns it in. It's another one of those lefties on Penn's roster. He's cutting back door the last time, has the ball in his left hand, trusted it. It's your strong hand. Nobody out there going to block it. He comes back and gets one. Now Slackert. Sharing with Reese McMullen. Hard hedge, now Slacker's left open for three. Bingo. We've seen that a lot over the years. The dribble handoff, switch sides of the floor, throw back from whence you came, and Clark Slacker continuing to hustle, knocks it down, creates a deflection on the other end, and ball. That was both Slacker and Gerhardt diving after that one. Kentucky, you think about Villanova, Auburn, Houston, plus the grueling Ivy League slate as well. This is certainly an ambitious year for Penn Quakers basketball. I wouldn't sleep on St. Joe's either this year. I think they're going to be pretty good in another tough matchup. We'll find that out on Friday afternoon, or Friday evening, I should say. McMullen knocked on the way in. And then, of course, the new look Big Five set up that Penn's a part of. As McMullen, see they're drawing the contact. A lot of classics this year for the Quakers, Joe. The Big Five classic, Cathedral classic, classic Joe Torty setting his partner up. <laughs> classic, classic. McMullen hits there. Yeah, that Cathedral Classic last year was a pretty cool event. Should be another exciting atmosphere this year. 50 seconds left. First half action here, Penn and John Jay for the first time in history. Reyes diving on the floor for this ball. Gerhardt taking it away. Now McMullen a three on one. Travel. Remember the old actor, Tom Sizemore? Yeah. The scene in True Romance. Okay. Where he's sitting there and he's listening. He says, you're an actor. Act. And then a couple of choice words after that. <laughs> Paul Nowski, you're a shooter. Shoot that. You get that coming in transition. That's the shot you've been practicing your entire life. Everybody in the gym, including all your coaches and teammates, want you to get that in the air. Now, First game jitters. I'm not like I'm not saying anything disparaging because I guarantee you, shooters are going to shoot that shot going forward. True Romance, by the way, the greatest movie ever made. Wait, is that is that this year's version of the greatest movie ever made? This no, is, this is the it is the greatest movie ever made. I have to go back to the tape to make sure that you've said that every single year because I'm sure that we've had a greatest movie ever made. I've always said True okay. Romance. Okay, all right. You go check the tape. Uh, <laughs> nice take here. I have to admit, I haven't seen that one. You're talking about size where I've seen, you know, obviously the, the other ones, but not the greatest it's, movie it's ever It's the made. role that got James Gandolfini, Tony Soprano. Oh, man. Brad Pitt as Floyd. Yeah. It's the only thing Brad Pitt ever has done in the last 30 years. Right, yeah, I've I haven't enjoyed, seen him in, right? in a, I haven't seen him in anything else. Right. I haven't seen him anywhere. <laughs> oh, man. Jordan Evelyn. Val Kilmer is the, as the ghost of Elvis. Really? 
You never see his face, though. Joe, you got to see this. I got to see this movie. What's wrong I with really you? do. You know, a lot of times your friends will tell you that you got to see something, you got to read something. You're like, yeah, 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 totally. And then you I've just blow them off. Apparently, I've been telling it to you for years, and you just don't listen <laughs> just, to me. Now I will. I doubt it. <laughs> Slackert with three to shoot. Gerhardt couldn't finish it off. And that's how the first half expires. Penn with a 61 34 lead over John Jay. And we talked about shaking the rust off and getting things going. Penn certainly with a hot start. Has done a good job of challenging. And there we are, Joe. The back of your head looks really good on that. Gigantic. Screen. Head like a toaster. <laughs> now that's Quaker Faithful, obviously, will have expected this first half result. Is there anything that the Quakers haven't shown that you'd like to see them work into here in this second half? Well, it's not like you're going to press at this point. It's not, you know, so it's not like you're going to switch up defenses. Penn, very fortunate right there. That's something you can work on. Press break. Holland leaning. He's not going to hit that one every day, but that was pretty good. The play was all about Eddie Holland being the pressure release valve against that press and getting end to end. Good look. Good finish. Kopech kicks it back out. And Thrower cleans the glass. Starters out there for Penn. Perkins, big size advantage here. Gets it back, finds Slackert. He's left open. That's a mistake. Doesn't hurt him this time, though. Holland. Follows it up and in. And a little bit too big down low. He's big in a lot of instances. Perkins getting into the lane actually gets the shot blocked, but is able to just stick with it, create the opportunity for Slackert and Eddie Holland there to finish it up. As Paulin on his own. And dribble drive gets to 12 feet, creates some separation. A nice take by Paulin. Thrower being respected a lot more as a shooter. You saw that closeout, but Slackert just misses, and now Spinoso. It's a pretty good post up by Eddie Holland, just sitting down in the lane against Holmes, and not able to find him. Thrower blocked. John Jay back out the other way. Spinoso says, No way. I love him. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> yeah, you think, eh, it might fade. Eh, we've seen a lot of one another. His act never gets old for me. <laughs> it really doesn't. I love his intensity. I love how hard he plays. Well, when he added the mustache, it was oh, over. Come it on. was over. Looks like an extra in a 70s cop show. Perkins. Has that one ripped away? Blocking foul call, looks like. And by the way, like the mustache, if it were just the mustache, I don't know that it would be as effective, but the flowing locks. That precious mane, and now look at him busting it down end to end. He thinks he's got one right here. Gets a piece of it. It's all a part of what makes you love Nick Spinoso. It, it just all goes it's, together. It's a man crush. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it has happened over the years every once in there, a while. There, I, you know what? You know how it goes, Joe. I have my guys. Uh -huh. right? Guys yes. that I just can't get enough of. Spinoso being one. I keep telling myself one day. I'm just I'm still you can't, working on you it. You set me up in the first <laughs> half. You made me look bad. You can't do that. you got to earn your way into my heart. <laughs> Second effort up and in Darnell. for Evelyn. Darnell was my guy. Oh, I love him. Darnell Foreman. Running off the court after he hits the shot right oh, before halftime. Just, half time. just <laughs> can't beat it. That one will stick out for Penn Faithful. Spinoso. Put back. Nope. Holland scoops it up. And poked away from behind. No quit there. 
Had a Paul and Holland looked like he was going to turn one over. Spinoza tries to turn one over to no avail. So you can see Penn's length and athleticism giving John Jay some trouble. Thrower left open. That's a bust. Fran Doherty is another one that I, he's another one I just absolutely love. He's like you. He's on the, I'm going to have as many children as I can. He's on that program. Belcour, love Belcour. Paulin trying to answer. I have to start my first five. That's four. I got to come up with a yeah, fifth. I guess so, yeah. It's, it's, position, by, it's it position by position. It's basketball well, now. It's 2023. You know? Right. Darnell is my point guard, oh, right? Yeah. Spinoso's down low. Spinoso, Fran Doherty, Belcour. I mean, you were a big fan of the big hyphen. You know, you. you Second teamer, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. it's yeah, like, yeah, I on. got you. I'm a big Darian Nelson Henry fan. But he, he's not cracking that lineup. It's a tough lineup to crack. Who else did I say? Did I just miss somebody? Is it Fran? Fran, Belcour, Spinoza. Darnell, Spinoza. That's four. That's the four, yeah. You need five to play, Joe. It's a five-team lineup, <laughs> or five-man lineup. Man, I have to think. See, weighing recent vintage versus some of the guys who've been back a little while. That's the, the tricky part. This year's group having a good time against John Jay. Perkins part of that. A little strong. step back three there for Perkins. Thrower, pretty good job defensively. Yeah, I think Thrower gets away with one again. He got a little leany. Perkins gets it blocked. No reset. Perkins. Jump ball is called. Timeout on the floor. 15.57 to go here in the second half. Penn all over John Jay in their home opener. Penn with a 68-42 lead over John Jay with Vince Kern and Megan Birdsong on the sidelines. Joe Torty here with you. Onowski. Eyes up a triple. He's still looking for his first one of this game. Reese McMullen left open. Now I don't think an the official shot timeout. clock started. Polonowski off the inbounds. Open look. Let that one fly. Tyler Perkins getting a little rest. Seeing a few more challenges defensively. Four for six in the first half. Got the goose egg here in the second half, 0 for 5. But somehow looks good doing it, Joe Torty. <laughs> Leskowski muscles it up and in. Yeah, he's been all over the place as Perkins. A step back jumper. Now a foul called away from the ball. If this is on Walter, it's his third. Got a guy. You to come in, limited minutes in your first game, do something memorable. It's one of the things that Steve Donahue talked about with Megan on the way into the locker rooms. He probably fouled a little bit too much at times. He said that to us in the locker room before the game. That's one of his concerns, teaching these guys how to play physically without fouling. Traveling violation called on Paulin. Paulin goes there. A little rock the baby. Batley. Ryan Batley. That, that's the add to the... I think that's my five. Hard to argue. Then you get into guys that are a little older that are more like contemporaries. So I can't have man crush on contemporaries. Well, I mean, our friend Mark Zoller didn't make of your course. list. Of course. Of course. He, I, like, <laughs> he is a contemporary of my wife. I can't have a man crush on him. Grand Deary the same way. Right. I understand now. This is my game. I make the <laughs> rules. And if not, you'll take the ball and go home. That's right. And, like, you know, then they, they became kids, right? They're like a little younger. It's right. like, okay, you know, right. like a couple of them called me Mr. Kern, which I found a little weird, but it's like, okay. Not anymore. <laughs> now now you're straight to the Vin Man? Yes, sir. McMullen on the attack. Hit and one. How did that go in? 
That was going off the other side of the rim and it rolled in with a little friendly English. It's a good lineup though. I think you could take some teams down with that lineup, for sure. Well, you take them down after the game, for sure. That much I know. <laughs> now here's McMullen. Like Tim Krug. Is a contemporary. Fantastic player. One of my all-time favorite Quakers. Ineligible. I, yeah, I can't have a man crush on a guy that's three years <laughs> younger than I am. Four years, however, you know. Understood. However, I will say, however, okay, Scott Kegler, man crush, always have, huh. since the day he came on his recruiting get visit. I loved him. Okay. So he's a contemporary, so he, he might have crossover appeal. Uh, so there are, are rules breakers there among them. There's an exception to every rule. I see. Smith takes it away. Finishes. And if George Smith weren't a Patriots fan, he would have a chance to be on that list. Oh, so that's a disqualifying. DQ. I see. DQ. At least he's probably still committed to being a Patriots fan. Oh, you know, there's 100%. a lot of people bailing off the ship. Ooh, look at this one. Oh, I thought he had it. Leskowski was pointing to himself, and I don't know they'll say it'll I go down. Kopech was going high off the glass right there. Get some extension. They thought he got the foul call too, so a big batch of nothing right there for his efforts. Smith running the show. This is actually likely to be close to his role this year, I would think, based on what we've seen, right? Vince spelling kind of either guard when he comes off the bench. Well, he's been such a foul. Good call. Gets hit in the head. Walter as he's going across the lane. But George Smith's versatility allows him to be, like, he handles it well. He shoots it pretty well. He's your best perimeter defender. And I think Steve Donahue likes him in that role. Coming off the bench. Stabilizing. And he's going to get his minutes. It's not like it's a, oh, you're getting two minutes a half. You know, we've been talking about some of the other players that are missing, but Lucas Monroe was a rebounder and a stopper for Penn last season. Two-time captain. And you have to think that guys like Smith are going to help to pick up some of the slack, of, along with Leskowski, in those two areas especially. Pull-up elbow jumper and a hit for Jameer Stewart. Pen up big here in the second half. It's just some pretty good on-the-ball defender. He's making McMullen work coming up the floor. See, they're getting up into McMullen. A three launched and rolls in. Finally, the hit for Polanowski. You can see the big smile of relief finally seeing one go down. Spinoso in his ear as that one's going around, cheering his teammate on. Good challenge, Leskowski. Now out ahead of the pack, Leskowski, and he can flush it in. It's not even that exciting anymore. Guy dunks so often. Yeah, not a secret anymore. Yeah, but that one he turned over in the Temple game oh. last year. Legendary. What was the term that you used? Spine chiller supreme? That's yeah, one that I, it sounds like something <laughs> I would say, Joe. Spine chiller supreme is usually reserved for the left hand. But he went in with the left and brought it back with the right. Uh -huh, yeah. He was thinking about a two-hander. And realized the rim is actually 10 feet high, so I better <laughs> extend with one hand and get this over the rim. So watching here, we've seen Penn experiment with a variety of different combinations. A foul called there. 
Colin Chambers picking up the foul, the senior. And as you've seen Penn kind of executing in this combination of all the different players they've had in there, what do you make of their progress so far in game one? I Again, I, I think you're just looking for patterns and things that might fit together well. I don't think you're going to learn a ton from this game. Okay. Right? This is a... This is a kind of get your feet wet, run your stuff, be in the right spot, see who fits well together. Penn kind of goes pedal to the metal because in two days they've got Bucknell then on the road at St. Joseph's on Friday before hosting Villanova at home. So uh, you were talking about shaking off the rust in a hurry. I mean, you better do that because your early season slate is no cakewalk. Gerhardt checking back in for Walter. We should, we should probably announce that St. Joe's game from 17th and Gerard. And Lenardi's a St. Joe prep guy. Uh huh. You're a prep guy. I'm yep. a prep guy. I think that'd be fine. We get a closed circuit. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta see if there's anybody that's on the court that's a fellow Hawk. Chambers beats down low for Gerhardt, knocked on the way up. Smart play by Chambers to set up Gerhardt on the block. That comes from his mother, Colin Chambers. <laughs> Son of the great Paul Chambers. Speaking of Gerhardt, all set to take his free throws here. Vince Curran, Joe Torty here with you. Megan Birdsong joining us on the sidelines as Gerhardt hits. And a new faces up and down the lineup here for Penn. When we talked about Slackard and Spinoso being kind of the mainstay holdovers in terms of the big-time minutes getters for the Quakers a season ago. George Smith and Andrew Laskowski obviously there as well. Ed Holland breaking in. But other than that, it's a lot of new faces playing bigger minutes expected for Penn this season. Triple launch. Saved by John Jay. Good hustle by the Bloodhounds. Polonowski comes down with the rebound. Gerhardt finds Polonowski. Give and go. Little ambitious pass there, Vince. Step back jumper too strong. Isaac Holmes getting that one in the air. Here's Slackert for Penn. The three launched. Partially blocked it looked like by Polonowski. Or from Polonowski. Yeah, Holmes with a pretty good closeout right there. Polonowski a little slow on the release. There you go, a little dipsy do. Nice take from Isaac Holmes. I think Reyes. He might have twisted his ankle, running over, tightening that sneaker up. Good look at the head coach Ryan Highland in his tenth season. Gerhardt down low, and he flushes it in. The freshman with the stuff. A couple times we'd seen that. Gerhardt in the action. Ball screen, opening properly, and knew what to do with it right there. That one looked like it hit the top of the backboard. Ball bouncing around. John Jay comes up with it and forcing it up and in. A pretty good job by Bradbury making Gerhardt work. The ball actually bounces up one more time on the top of the backboard. 
which I think threw Elfia with Vince Kern and Megan Birdsong on the sidelines. Joe Torty here with you as the Quakers debuting some new look lineups, new look players, and so far so good at the Palestra. Thought we might have seen the last of Perkins here, but he's in with thrower and nice rebound by Perkins. Now a foul called as McMullen got tangled up. He'll be called for the foul. Fourth foul call. One and one the rest of the way. For John J. Joe Torty. 9.44 left here. You may not make it home for feet in time tonight, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> but it's my turn, probably. I think it's always your turn. We're just not sure whether you ever take it. <laughs> you're telling me that I'm the uh, I'll get you next time guy? I Is think, that what yeah, you're telling me? You know what? Wow. If the shoe fits. After all these years, uh, that's where I sit. Wow. TJ Chisholm being defended by Perkins. Kopech lost his footing. Smith doesn't like this call. It's a tough call for George Smith. It looks like their feet may have gotten either tangled up or Kopech finds the slick spot out there like George Smith moving pretty well but again John Jay putting pressure on the pen defense off the bounce it started with Chisholm then Kopech turned that corner he was going downhill oh Joe one and one. Oh, it is yep how about that the rest of the way probably now it's going to be two shots in a minute. Over the top called against Bradbury. I like Bradbury's energy. He really kind of anchoring that defense back there. A lot of talk. Attacking. Oh, I was open. I was open, yeah, and you know what was happening. You. I was, you know, if that were maybe a foot right, I was letting it go. Yeah, I was going to catch it and let it go. You know who I wasn't giving it to? Any official. <laughs> that was going in the air. Throw it under the table. Say, you go. You can get that yourself. Now I'm. We're sitting here watching John Jay, and obviously they're down big to Penn. However, given the way that this game was kind of going in the first half. Makes you think that this is going to be a team that's going to give some teams trouble this year. You can certainly see some pieces for Ryan Hyland. They Throw attacked it. pretty well off the bounce. A couple of bigs that serviceable is not the right word. They're more than serviceable. As a whole group, rebounding seems to be a major emphasis for them, going after every ball. Going to be a tough team to play against. McMullen into the lane. Smith into the basket. Loose ball. Perkins trying to dig it out. And a foul called on Perkins. So that's a tough one. Perkins playing physically. Was it Paulin? It looked like Paulin was sliding. And it said we, as Perkins kept the pressure on him, it looked like Paulin just kind of kept sliding and moving a little bit more. So you can see why Perkins a little bit frustrated right there. And Paul on the other side, like, yo, bro, like, you knocked me down. You're pushing me around. Like, let me take the foul call. That's two one and ones out of the way, Joe Torty. 
he said with glee. Well, Steve Donnie, you talked about he thinks his team might have a proclivity to foul a little bit too much, an early season proclivity for you there, Joe. How much of that can be coached out versus it kind of being the DNA of how some guys like to defend? Well, you can like to defend. If you're going to be hacking people, you're not going to be out there all along. So right. you're going to have to either get it coached out of you or learn it by getting reps out of you. Remember, A.J. Broder used to foul a lot when his – when he first came in freshman year, it seems invariably he would have two in the first half. And by the end of it, yeah, you could play him 39 minutes and not have to worry about it. So a lot of it comes with reps. A lot of it comes with figuring out the speed of it all. Perkins through traffic, takes it himself. I think Perkins had had enough. He had a couple things that didn't quite go his way. He got banged around a little bit. Three on one, he says, I got this. Yep, I got it. There's another one. He's got it again. And a flush from Gerhardt. It's funny, the play before, he forces the action a little bit. And that play right there, he eases back up off the throttle and allows Gerhardt to find his way down that right side. You can see Perkins gasping a little bit right now getting used to being out there and the intensity of all this. Now foul called down low. Called on Gerhardt. 6.52 to go in regulation. Not a really neat event. Head coach Highland told me that yesterday's day was a little different and that they got up, had an 8 a.m. practice, grabbed bagels and made signs and headed out to mile marker 26 of the New York City Marathon where they cheered on New Yorkers. He said this is a day that he loves more than any other day in New York City. He's been doing this for 10 years as he's been a part of this program. He said it's a great team bonding experience and it's great for these guys to see how special it is to be a part of a team representing New York City. Guys. Megan, thanks so much. Vince, I didn't see you at the uh, New York City Marathon yesterday. Did you take this year off? Uh, I did not run it, but my friend Paul Hondros' daughter ran it. There he you just go. sent me a picture. Very cool. She probably saw the signs from I John bring, Jay. Bring that up because uh, George Smith had an internship with Mr. Hondros this summer. So give him a little shout out. You guys brought up the marathon. I'm just trying to stay relevant. <laughs> I don't think you ever have to try to do that. Vince. I got a story for whatever topic you bring up, Joe. <laughs> Six twenty-two left in half number two. I suppose to half number three. Julia ran the uh, marathon. I don't know whether I said that or not. A little shout out. Oh, there you go. I don't think I could wrap my head around that running a marathon myself. So, Andy Barada's wife used to run them and I said what do you think about while you're out he says it's easy 18 more miles 18 more miles 18 more miles 18 more miles and then 17 more miles wow. 17 more miles 17 more miles just waiting for it to end mind the entire numbing time. <laughs> in the repetition sheesh well the build up to it and the training it's got to be like really when you cool. play golf right you got to go out there and say oh, I got 18 holes left I'm going to be really bad yeah, right and then each one you get through is up only 17 to go see you're thinking too macro. It's, I've got 350 yards to go. I've got 300 yards to go. Yeah, I've got, you know. You get there on the first tee, it's like, okay, only 120 more of these shots and I'll be finished. <laughs> you act like with four kids that I golf anymore. That's why I said it was 120. <laughs> you're getting out there regularly, it'd be like 118. <laughs> Christian Abochi out there as well, the sophomore center. Penn's freshman class last year. Just Abochi and Cam Thrower. And that's it. There you go. Zone for the first time. We talked about would you change up the defenses. I think with Abochi back there, a real rim protector, you can press out on the perimeter and know that there's going to be a formidable last line of defense. 
Three seconds to shoot. That one missed everything. And the shot clock violation. You can see the zone kind of stymieing John Jay. Completely different look. You got to attack the elbows and the gaps against the zone. And John Jay did neither. Here's where they've been pretty good. That's a good back screen right there. Reyes needs to help his teammate out. Travel. Penn bench doesn't like it. So I have not gotten the weekly whistles yet this year. Have they eliminated the pivot foot? <laughs> I mean, they moved the band over there after 38 years. I'm just wondering Anything's fair after game. 90 years of having a pivot foot, whether that was one of the rules changes that I missed. No? Okay. You're always a fan of the weekly whistle. The first one to watch it probably in the I country. watch it. Corner triple. Chisholm misses long. Off of Polonowski. I think Polonowski thought that one was heading in the other direction. Man to man out of bounds. A couple of jabs here for Holmes, puts it up and can't quite get it to go. Knocked out of bounds, it'll stay here. Holmes does a pretty good job there shielding off, let's see, I think it was George Smith from the ball, trying to get that one up on the glass. Holmes trying to get another take here. Again, knocked out of bounds off of Penn. Timeout called by John Jay. Ryan Highland's like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> We've had two attacks of the, the 38th and Chestnut. The whole building? Scraped. I think life sciences or something like that's going in there. Uh -huh. So we are meandering our way into the 21st century. The Bochi bothers that shot. There you go. And the and aforementioned rim protection. Now he's busting it to get end to end. Chambers a triple. That stays out. Another shot, this time blocked by Holland. Jeremiah Cardi trying to get his way in. 4.05 left in the half. One shy of the double bonus, Vince. There's still time, Joe. Good job by George Smith, deflection. And the takeaway by John Jay, ball still on the ground. Holland, another block. And now Chambers. Kolonowski, Abochi, and a foul. He was thinking about it. He was thinking about it. 345 left in regulation. Abochi had gather a big explosion. A little bit on all the stuff raising the. I'm, I'm wondering if I am so old now that things have come that back means into something style. Different. You know? Abochi rims out there. Looking for his first point as a Quaker. How'd he shoot free throws in practice last year, Joe? You want to jinx him again? You want to get somebody else to find another one? There you go. Soft roll in there for Abochi. He is in the books. Quaker's back in a 2-3 zone. To go down to Penn. Jake Sue is in the game. Sophomore walk on was also a member of the Penn football team last year. Smith gets open. 
Chambers trying to keep it alive. Now there's a John Jay player down behind the play. Penn trainer Phil Samko springing into action. Can't quite trying to crash the boards. So it would be John Jay ball underneath. I guess you can't just give it to him because it it's like getting a yellow card in soccer. If you get a flagrant one, then, you know. That's on your it's, record. It's, it's, it's on your permanent record, Joe. <laughs> you better get on your best behavior. This is going on your permanent record. Didn't work back then. Not going to start now. Rosa sharing the ball with Cameron Walker. Back to Rosa. And he traveled. Doesn't it feel like 10 years ago you were talking about cheesesteaks for 100 points for Penn and they've been stuck on it for quite some time? I'm a little hungry. So. <laughs> Chambers, a three. Feast on that. Penn Bench is a fan. Foul called on Sue. Ten fouls on number 53, Jake Sue is first team pass. Double ball. Pretty good hustle there by Sue, trying to get the deflection. Colin Chambers, a little smile on his face. Cameron Wilson at the line of the He call his dad on the way home. Tied his career high as a Quaker. You know what that means. You got to get another one another in the air one in the next 215. There's plenty of time. Smith helping out a boat on the rebound. You can just see George Smith's poise. Very steadying influence out there for a group that doesn't have a ton of minutes together. A ton of minutes at all, frankly. Sue into the lane. Turn around, fade away, jumper. Now a foul called. And it'll go against John Jay. John Jay foul number 33, James Bradbury. Is third. Bradbury called for his third personal foul. Side two minutes to go here. Well, that looked good. Rims I out. thought it was in. It was good high stroke. release, good spin. One hundred seconds left here. Triple, wouldn't fall. The old leg spread there by Stewart trying to catch a little contact with Colin Chambers on the way by. Sue steps into a three. Polonowski keeps it alive for Ubuchi. Extra pass. Sue cruises in, gets it blocked. And he draws the foul. He's headed to the free throw line. I mean, if you're Sue, you've got to be thinking getting them in the air, right? He gets an open look at a three and then a good attack here. I don't think he was thinking about turning one over, but he was climbing up somebody's chest right there. Looks as though Cameron Welker got the worst of that. Yep. Phil Samko out again, trying to help out. Now, the good news is that Phil Samko no longer in the locker room, which hopefully is a indication. 
that the blow to the head not as serious that we saw a few minutes ago. Can't speculate yet, but he's out. That's got to count for something. Shoe able to hit there for his first point as a Quaker. 102-54. And Cardi is back on the John Jay bench. Has caught him down there at the end. So Good to see that, too. Good to see his right. Forty-five seconds left. Another shot in the air, splashed in from Miles Tucker, the freshman from Cathedral Prep High School. Chambers open for three. Rosa steps through. Ubuchi comes up with that rebound. Now Polonowski. Steve Donahue gives the wave. Does this dribble this out? Sue's thinking about it, though. <laughs> eh, you know what? Did get on the board. A little behind the back action. 3-2-1. That'll do it. Solid opener for the Quakers. Great energy and effort from John Jay, but the Quakers just a little bit too much athletically.